I want, meaning that I don't have. And what I want is more valuable than what I already have. The mainstream told us, they said, the mainstream said, everything that you have has no value. Your clothes, your furniture, everything has no value. The only way you have value is if you come through us, mainstream institutions, and on top of that, we're not letting you in. So look at, look at what we're up against. We're not letting you in, but this is the only place you can be validated. This is the only place we believe you should be, is in college, uh, in the army, in the, but we ain't letting you in. So we're sitting outside, ready to die. But we didn't. We said, because you're not letting us in, cool, keep everything you got. We're going to create our own thing over here, and you're not getting in this. This here, we're creating. This was the attitude in 72. The attitude was, the record was, we got our own thing. Flash used to cut that up. We got our own thing. We got it. Here's the cut that up. Cats used to, it wasn't about the record. It was about that feeling of, yeah, we got our own thing. Dress different, man. Put on the lease suit with the bell bottoms, clocks, his cell glasses, Kango hat, got the graffiti piece on the back with a big boom box. <laughs> to find all more in my presence. I'm blasting this box, loitering laws going across me. Doing all sorts of peace and whatever the order is that is oppressing me is now out of order. I have sound and light. Our boom boxes and our graffiti art taught the whole United States mainstream. We wasn't in college. We wasn't in none of that. We tagged on the college wall. <laughs> and people said, yo, what's that? Oh, it's a gang. Oh, it's art. Oh, it's not. Oh, it's this. What was the point? Here's the essence right here. When it was time to say our name, we told a story about ourselves that was better than what we were at that time. We, was, we spoke higher than what we were at the time. 1979, Rapper's Delight, a group named the Sugar Hill Gang comes out. One of the most famous lines that all the kids in the ghetto would sing along with. Here's the line. So after school, I take a dip in the pool, which is really off the wall. I got a color TV so I can see the Knicks play basketball. There was another part that said, I got a Lincoln Continental and a sunroof Cadillac. And then, so after school, I take a dip. They didn't have none of this. <laughs> the people listening to them didn't have none of this. But this was the essence of hip hop. When I say I have nothing, Legally, I have nothing. But I got a rag. I got a handkerchief, a rag. Dirty rag. This rag costs 10 cents to make a rag. I could go to Prada because that's the validation and buy a rag from Prada. And because I spend $400 on a rag on my head, I have been validated by prop. What we did was we said, give me this rag that you just wiped the furniture off with and the dishes and the car. Let me put that on my head. On the head of a man or woman that believes in themselves, a worthless rag becomes a $10 million fashion item. The rags that we wear on our heads, the handkerchiefs that we got on our heads, that's a $10 million business. When that started, those handkerchiefs were given away for free. You can't get those handkerchiefs for free today. We used to get them for free. It was so common and just useless. It's like, it's like hip hop saying, we're going to 
put rolls of toilet tissue on our wrists, and that's going to be the new thing. And because we walk around like, you son, I got a show. The roll of toilet tissue on the wrist. Yo, I got the green one. What you got, man? Yo, the toilet tissue on the wrist. It was just that crazy that we put candles on, all this stuff, start walking around like this. What's your name? Super Bob Ski? <laughs> Yo, take my gazelles off. Yo, listen, man. I got a link in Continental, man. I was like, I don't have none of this. But this is what I thought of myself. When somebody said, who are you? I didn't say I'm broken, poor, uneducated, and going nowhere. Even though I was! <laughs> Bro, uneducated and going nowhere. But hip hop came upon all of us in the ghetto, 1972 in the Bronx. It just came on us. And all of a sudden, we started to reject the mainstream. And that was the essence of it. That's why cats that want to run to the mainstream today are playing themselves, and that's why we say they're not real hip hop. The original essence and concept of hip hop was create the parallel community. Create an entirely different community. We ain't hung up with racism, sexism, whether you're gay or straight, rich or poor, real, Jew, Christian, Muslim. Hip hop ain't got them problems. And this is what Africa Bambada was dealing with. He put a record out in 82 called Planet Rock. Excuse me, teacher. Yes. Yes, indeed. He put out a record called Planet Rock that included all races of people but we didn't have a voice. Today they try to tell you that hip hop is an African American thing. It's not, in its essence. Africans, of course, we are the antenna to the universe, can't find all that. <laughs> However, when you discuss hip hop for real as a cultural movement, I invite you guys to watch movies like Wild Style, like, uh, Style Wars, uh, the graffiti art documentary, Style Wars. Style Wars, by the way, is a graffiti art documentary that shows it's, it's our only documentation of white youth participating in hip hop in a serious way in the mid 80s. Because people believe today hip hop is just a black thing and a black male thing, and all we're doing is ducking and pimping and all that and talking about women and this, that, the other. And to be honest with you, you know, black women don't even buy rap music. <laughs> to be honest with you, it's, it's white women and white men, young white men, and some artists get a predominantly of, of white women that buy rap music product, the mainstream rap music product you see on the television today and on radio. And the struggle within hip hop, even today as a movement, is that what you see on television and radio does not represent the totality of us. We're not going to front. <laughs> we more thugged out than your president, George Bush. But I will say this, that there is a balance to how we present ourselves from day one. We was always beyond race. Because like I pointed out at the beginning, here's the new problem. Most of our parents were against us. Imagine being black in the 70s. And before you even get out the door, your father or your mother or just your mother is on your back. Turn that noise off. Don't be writing on my furniture. Don't be. The white community. Oh, but don't even forget moms. Moms was poor with us. Okay, that's the first line of defense. You get past moms and you get outside, the cops are right there. If you get past them, you get to the black intelligentsia. They got no time for you. You get past them, you get to the black church. Oh, son, pull up your pants. Before I can be saved? 